Good morning, dogs and cats. Today I'm going to be going over some general reasons why atheists seem to underestimate, and by underestimate I mean completely dismiss, the intellectual nature of Christians. Now, just some things to think about. Picture, if you will, a church. Just any old church. Now picture another one. Picture a couple more. How many of those churches that you just pictured, Christian churches, don't go to Catholic churches, it's unnecessary, but just non-denominational, regular old churches that you see driving down the road, and they just got some random name for them. How many of those churches were poor, run-down old churches? Okay, a couple of them. But how many of those churches were very nice, big buildings, very nice cars parked outside? Now, while I could make a whole different video about that, the reason why I'm pointing this out right now is because these people have degrees. These people have jobs. These people have careers, in fact. They have businesses that they own. They are engineers, physicists, doctors, and lawyers. And generally speaking, to assume that they're all a bunch of fucking dumbasses kind of makes you a dumbass. And as an atheist, you should pride yourself on your intellectual objectivity. And you might want to, therefore, avoid being a dumbass. Hmm. So, the reason why people of faith in general, and this includes people of Judaic, Islamic, Buddhist, any kind of faith, Hindu, I'm not going to... Why, 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 why does everybody have this list of major religions? Okay. So people of faith, in general, aren't non-intellectual people. And in fact, I'm about to prove to you very easily that someone with faith is more intellectual than someone without it. Yes, atheists, I'm talking to you. I'm telling you that someone who has faith, or at least recognizes the necessity for faith, and understands the concept of when they are and are not having faith, is more intellectual, more capable of logic and sound reason than any atheist. Here's the reason why. In order to prove something scientifically, you need to form a hypothesis, hypothesis, and draw a conclusion based upon verifiable results. That is, you figure out your control variables and you figure out what things you need to take measurements on to get a result. When you cannot repeat said experiment and get the same result, what you have is a possibility. When you cannot even complete one experiment to get conclusive data, in the case of the Big Bang Theory or evolution, what you have is just a theory that's just possible that might be that way. That's all. But to prove something, there has to be no other ideas that cannot be disproven. Okay, that is, concrete science has to be concrete. A person of faith realizes that science has its limits. And while most people of faith 
don't just make up mumbo jumbo fairy tales to explain away scientific things that can be ascertained through reason and experimentation. That seems to be what most, most atheists tell themselves in order to avoid having to listen to any person of faith or anything that they say, no matter how logical or reasonable, and no matter how much the counter-argument is not actually backed up by science. Evolution. The Big Bang. There is no science there. What it's called is pattern analysis. Okay? And this pattern analysis has many, many flaws. And there are many other theories that explain not only the data as a whole, but these theories also explains the flaw in the theory of the very, very many flaws in the theory of evolution. Now, the Big Bang. Okay. Say we all lived on a ball. And the universe was just like this. And this is the original theory, okay? Empty space and things floating out in the middle of it. Well, see, they came up with this heliocentric idea that all these things orbit around each other because of this idea called gravity. Okay. And they wanted to make gravity out to be the central binding force of the universe. But what they realized is that, well, if these objects are all attracting each other, we better come up with a we better come up with a damn good reason why they don't all just attract each other and eventually just collapse and because you know if gravity can form a planet then there should just be one big fucking planet shouldn't there that's all there should be just one big condensed mass that's all the universe should be according to gravity so they had to come up with this big bang theory well what if that already happen and where we're at is a result of an explosion so the reason why we're not all collapsing into each because we're actually just moving away from each other right now and we can say that we've proven this because uh well there, everything's tinted red a little bit so we'll say it's moving away from us. even though stars apparently emit infrared light. They naturally emit red spectrum. So you can't really measure how far away they are, how far away they're moving by the redshift canyon. How red is something that's already red? That'll tell you a lot. Experimentation is verifiable. Okay? Every time you have science fact, you can then Go into a laboratory and regenerate that experiment. You can repeat that experiment. You can show, oh, yeah, look what I did. And here, come, see, I can do it again. Now you have proof. See, atheists like to think they have proof. They don't have proof. What they have is a bunch of questions. When you have questions, you don't have science fact. You just have any old other religion. Now, getting back to the Big Bang Theory right quick, it's really funny to me that so many people have given up on God for such a ridiculous theory. Okay? Because... First of all, not only are just there, there, over the history of what has led to the Big Bang Theory, if you look at it critically, you can see they're just compensating for one hole in their theories after another, okay? Historically, it's just been going on for years. And um, atheists, stop taking pride in, in the whole Copernicus thing because uh, Copernicus was a Christian. And the Catholic Church 
liked his ideas. He was a Catholic. He, he was very involved and welcome in debate in the Catholic Church. And they actually adopted his model for like almost 200 years or something. Before there was kind of civil strife with the Protestant Reformation and all that good stuff. Then, actually, then the Catholic Church went back on the conversion model. How many people know that? I like to say, oh, the Catholic Church has been just stifling science. No, actually, the Catholic Church enabled science, enabled free debate for quite some time. Like every institution, though, the Catholic Church has had some shitty leaders in the past, too. So, on top of the just logical reasons why you can doubt the so-called NASA model, okay, um, one should also consider a lump of coal. The reason why I say that is because a lump of coal is something that is formed very similarly to the way that planets are allegedly formed. That is, hot dust and ash from a supernova or whatever that led to a nebula. Eventually, the gravitational pull of that field of magnetism created by the dust cloud rubbing together um, formed a fucking planet gravity just gravity magically sucked in all this dust and formed iron limestone granite Marble, now think of a lump of coal. What does it take to form a lump of coal? It takes a whole lot of pressure, external pressure, way down deep, just to form. A lump of coal. Come on. NASA. Let me just take a moment to plug somebody who uh don't don't think he's all all right all the time. Nobody's all right all the time. That would be fucking boring for whoever had to experience that horrifying fate. But the NASA channel is something that everybody should check out. Or at least find the uh, stand-up special that a few other people have been passing around that this guy did. It's hilarious, and it'll make you think about NASA. And whether or not this book being too hard is excusable because of all the science that you've been fucking spoon-fed by NASA. Some simple observational things that you can repeat in a laboratory, i.e. a mobile laboratory, skyscraper, dirigible, airplane, weather balloon. When you gain altitude, the horizon is always eye level. Okay? Light is bent by gravity. The Hubble Satanists, uh, scientists, have said that the reason why we can see this star in this star is actually 
not because we fucking painted them all with Photoshop, but because of gravity bending the light around it so you can see behind the fucking nebula with supernovas and shit. You can see behind that and see another. NASA. Science. So if I go up in a skyscraper, watching the sunset, or just looking at anything, looking at anything, and a gravitational field, i.e. a planet, a ball, ball, bail, should bend the light. So as a matter of perspective, if I'm looking at a distant object, the light coming towards me, bouncing off of the sun, should be steadily curving as it travels towards me. And the relative effect would be that as it is reaching my eyesight, it falls a little bit. Okay. Not only does this explain why ships disappear over the horizon, but it also, if you just plug it into the theory of gravity and heliocentrism, creates a paradox, a contradiction. It cannot fucking be, okay? Because what you have, if you look at any widescreen, high-definition video, is a laser-perfect, exact, straight edge of a calm ocean, or the salt flats, or the Kansas plain, or the Oklahoma, Oklahoma plateau, or whatever. And there is, in every instance that people attempt to measure curvature, no measurable curvature. Now, if I'm in a building, and I travel high enough, or if I'm in a dirigible, and I try high, travel high enough to where I'm halfway high enough to via direct line of sight, see the curvature of the Earth, I should already be able to see the curvature of the Earth. Because the more distant the light is, the more it bends. And it's bending around a ball. So, the horizon should actually look a little more curved than it actually is. But it doesn't look curved at all. At all. You have to look at a cardboard cutaway. It's all black up here. Or you have to look at a fisheye lens. Or you don't see any curvature, no matter how high you go up. And no matter how high you go up, the horizon... What are you doing? You ever been in a big building? I've been in a lot of big buildings. You ever been on a plane? I've been on several dozen plane flights. Including one from the continent of Australia to the continent of North America. You'd be surprised how, when, before they canceled those direct flights, how long you could see icebergs. I had one of them Casio watches. Big ones. If you were a little dorky kid in the 80s, you either had one of these or you wanted one. Of them. And it had every different little function a little geek could want. It did crap that I wasn't even old enough to understand yet. Time goes on. Um, but, see what I did was I set a timer. And... At 6 hours and 43 minutes, I fell asleep. Couldn't freaking just watching the iceberg once in this time and thinking about this atlas that I had. I had a very, very nice leather-bound, navy blue, big atlas of the world. And I knew what I was supposed to be seeing according to the maps. That 
that's not what I was seeing. What I saw was the ice wall of the flat earth. Now, before you start laughing too hard, you might want to look at the history of heliocentrism. Look at the desperate economic times under which it was adopted. Look at the desperate war time under which it was sealed into everybody's brain by NASA. What you find is periods in history where Governments were very likely to lie for the sake of the greater good. And I'm not here to criticize anybody for that, okay? Secret societies all have their purposes. And I am very thankful for a certain secret society for having kept many different little puzzles for me to wake up and figure out. It's been very helpful. But the fact of the matter is, there's always been other secret societies that aren't very helpful. And they've infiltrated anything they can infiltrate. Anything they can infiltrate. They might be at your local mom's, mom and pop fucking pet store. Like, okay, that, that's a little ridiculous. But it, it, it's not beleaguering the point. Okay? You have, right now, over 36,000 Russian FSB agents. Or... It's, it's actually unknown whether or not they're, they, 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 some of them might have been members of the Mossad. Operating within the continental U.S., most of these sleeper agents have positions at local government offices and media. And a lot of them also have elected seats. They hold offices. And I think it's pretty obvious to most people. They're on the national fucking news telling us what to think every single day. Infiltrators and usurpers that don't have the best interest of the brotherhood at heart. They need to be dealt with. Now, to get back to the uh, point of this video, yeah, I know I do that a lot. Sorry. You know anybody else who can talk all this shit without notes or clips or anything like that? It's got to be done, so I'm doing it. Science needs to acknowledge the unknown. Needs to acknowledge the hypothetical. And if a given scientific argument cannot provide all the answers, and there are, are alternative theories which cannot be disproven by your theory, then what you have is belief. You believe that your theory is correct, though not conclusive. People of faith are, many of them, many of them, scientists. Many of them, their analysis of scripture is even very similar to the scientific method. Their analysis of the effects of faith in their own lives, in their own personal walk, is an out. It, it's very similar to the scientific method. God isn't asking you to be a dumbass. God's asking you to think for yourself. If you stop paying attention to nothing but propaganda, you might realize that Christians have always been on the side of atheists. Christians have always been on the side of anybody who wants to debate, who wants to think freely, who wants to live freely. There have always been usurpers. There have always been people who read the wrong books and feel too good about themselves and want to oppress other people. Just because they wiggle their way into Christianity doesn't mean Christianity as a concept 
is wrong. Now you can have an attitude about it and react like a spoiled brat to the clear fact that your logic has been proven flawed. Or you can stop relying on hypocrites to tell you about Christianity. Pick up a Bible and read it for yourself. There's four Gospels comprised mostly of the words of the man himself. If you read these, you'll find that most of the things that you disagree with about what you perceive as Christians have nothing to do with Christianity at all. And I hope then you can find enough peace in your hearts to actually objectively analyze what you've been brainwashed with. Thanks, guys. Please like this video. Please subscribe. I need all the help I can get. Peace.